Hello everybody, welcome back to another Gregorius Maths video. Yep, that's right. Two in one day. Two videos in one day. How crazy. <laughs> anyway, um, today I'll be introducing Abstract Algebra 1.1. This is really important because it's you have to know at least some of the definitions at least to get by in other topics in maths such as like number theory and even topology and stuff. So today I'll be doing some basic definitions. I'll be defining monoids, groups and homomorphisms. I'll give one basic example of each. But if this but if this video gets five likes, oh, Kai Kanazawa um then yeah, I'll I'll do some more interesting examples. Uh, otherwise I'll just go on to define some more stuff. But I do want to do the interesting examples. But I feel they're so good that they just require a whole video. <laughs> Five likes, Kanazawa, Kai Kanazawa. Okay, all right. Enough rambling. That's not why you came to see. You came to see the definition of a monoid group and homomorphism. So first we'll define a monoid, okay? So, a monoid, so G is a monoid if, okay, the first condition is this, for all, let's just say, X, Y, and Z in G, uh, x, y, then z equals x, then z, then y, z. Uh, okay, so for example addition, 2 plus 3, then plus 4 is equal to 2 plus 3 plus 4. And this is called being associative. And the second condition is there exists E in G um, such that for all X in G, um, X E equals X. In other words, E is the unit. element okay so what this means is that in this monoid there is an element which doesn't affect anything so for example for multiplication e would be one so for a multiplicative monoid i i think that's what you say e would be one because multiplying something by one doesn't change it for addition e would be zero for subtraction e would be zero Okay, so a quick example would be the natural numbers uh, with n, uh, I mean, not with n, with zero, otherwise it wouldn't be a monoid. So, the natural numbers, I'm not going to do the fancy n because I can't draw even a fancy n, plus, so let me just uh, write this in a different colour so that you know it's an example. So the natural numbers under addition is a monoid. Okay, let's see. Does it satisfy this? For all x, y, and z in the group, or uh, sorry, not in the group, in the monoid, x, y, then z equals x, then y, z, I mean y, z, then x. So, does it hold that for all x plus y, plus z equals z plus, no, x plus z plus y, uh, y plus z. Uh, yes, it does. That's obvious. Like, I already gave the example of 2, 3, and 4. This is, this, yeah, I don't, yeah, that's just so obvious. So, yeah, okay. And does it satisfy the second condition? 
Is there a unit element? Yes. Uh, uh, let's just say zero is the unit element. Um, because that implies that zero plus a equals a, which is of course true. Okay, so that's the definition of a monoid. Now the definition of a group. A group is a monoid, but a bit less general, a bit more specific. So, uh, G is a group if, okay, first, firstly, it's a monoid. Secondly, so it satisfies these two conditions. It has a unit element and it's associative. And number three, uh, for all x in G, there exists y in G such that uh, xy equals e. Or uh, another way we could say this is for all x in G, there is an inverse element. Okay? So, for example, the integers under addition would be a group. The natural numbers would not be a group. Because, say we have 1, we can't have 1 plus a positive number equal to 0, the unit element. We have to have 1 plus negative 1, which is not a natural number, but it is an integer. So, uh, the example Okay, uh, the integers under addition, okay? It, it is a monoid. And B, um, negative A, I'll say this, negative A is the inverse of A, okay? That's how I'll say it. Basically, for all A in this, in this group, um, the inverse is negative a, because a plus negative a is zero, i.e. the unit element. Okay, now we'll define a homomorphism and be done. As you can see, this is a bit, this isn't, you might not see why this is so useful, but if you get five, if you hit, if we hit five likes in a reasonable amount of time, then I'll define some more, I, I mean, I'll do some more interesting examples, I promise. <coughs> so, we'll just define the third thing, and that'll be it for today. Okay? So, the definition number three is, um, uh, we'll just define a monoid hom homomorphism, and we'll just call that a homomorphism. But a quick remark is, a group homomorphism is the same thing just if G and G prime are groups, not uh, monoids. So, let G and G prime be monoids. Okay? A monoid homomorphism okay also known as a homomorphism but just for clarification we'll just write monoid homomorphism is um, a mapping 
f from g to g prime such that uh, f of x y equals f of x f of y and uh, if just e is the unit element of g and g, e prime is the unit element of g prime okay just keep that in mind and f of e equals e prime okay so if we input e into our first mapping into our first monoid we output the second unit element we output the unit element of g prime okay so again uh, a quick remark uh, a group homomorphism is the same thing but but with groups Okay, so it's the same definition except let G and G prime be groups. Okay, and now we'll do one last example. Uh, what the example is, is, so N denotes the natural numbers under addition, by the way or the set of integers greater than or equal to zero. So, um, oh, let G be a monoid. Uh, actually, I'm just gonna specify This is a multiplicative multi multiplica. Yeah, I'm just going to see that. I wrote uh, spelled it correctly. The spelling is trivial and left as an exercise to the watcher. Uh, monoid. I hope that I'm using the right terminology. Basically, what I'm trying to say is a monoid under multiplication. Okay. Um, mapping from G. No, not from G. From, <coughs> from the natural numbers to G. Uh, uh, is uh, such that f of n equals x to the n is a homo blah 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 okay does it satisfy both of the both of the conditions is f of x y equal to f of x f of y yes f of n y equals uh x to the n, x to the y, which equals f of n, f of y, precisely, obviously, and is f of 0 the unit element of n under addition equals x to the 0 equals 1 equals e prime. Oh, just, yeah, e prime. Okay, because one is the unit element of a multiplicative monoid. I hope that that's what you call monoid under multiplication. But I'm too lazy to write more monoid under multiplication. However, it's very satisfying that I managed to fit in all of this into one board. So, uh, yeah, 
Hopefully that wasn't too boring. This was just a bunch of definitions and examples. I don't know why I'm so tired. Definitions and examples. But if you want more interesting examples, then hit five likes. <coughs> Kai Kanazawa. Uh, shout out to the fifth like, by the way. And I'll see you in the next video. <sighs> Goodbye.